Remember that scene from Live Fear or Die Hard where John McClane and Matthew are flying in the helicopter and he says, How are we gonna find Warlock's house? Um, probably gonna be the one with the lights on. When it comes to blackouts, this clip describes my family's experience perfectly. We're the one with all the lights on. Now while everyone around us is struggling with no AC and no power and kids to occupy, here on our homestead, honestly, this has been the easiest storm we've ever gone through. Now we've had a ton of rain, still have a lot of standing water all over the place, had lots of trees come down. It's been different. You know, blackouts were really rare for us. We moved into this property in 2016 and we didn't have any power outages that I can think of until Snowpocalypse a few years back. And it seems like ever since then, the power has been out multiple times a year and for longer and longer periods of time. The goal of this video is not just for me to brag about how amazing my system is, but rather to encourage you and show you how you can have this exact same experience and have the same peace of mind so that when the power goes out for you, the grid around you, you could just say, meh go back to sleep it's amazing and you can do it and it's not that hard and it's not that expensive now here in 2024 we've had four blackouts in just this one spring season now you can say it's climate change you can say it's too many people moving to texas whatever it is maybe it's a combination of all of it i don't know but one thing's for certain is that it's happening more and more and more let's take a trip back memory lane for just a moment back to snowpocalypse where the entire grid in texas went down and it was like six minutes or something like that from going down for weeks on end. They said it was something that's never been seen and hopefully we never see it again. But when that happened, we had dozens of animals die. We had goats giving birth in that freeze. We had rabbits that were giving birth at the same time and dying. We had all sorts of problems and most of it stemmed from not having energy. Now, I'm a prepper. I had my little generator. I faithfully started that thing up all the time uh, well at least maybe four times a year every quarter i would start it up guess what i go out there i yank on that cord and immediately i broke the fuel valve off of it because it was so darn cold at that moment we realized that we were way in over our heads and we needed to make a change and that's when we decided we're going to push forward with energy independence and have more than just a generator Whatever the reason, blackouts are likely here to stay and we can't stop the blackouts, but what we can do is change how they affect our lives. Now we've been busy. I've been cutting up trees for myself and for other people and running around and making sure the family members are okay. But you know, I've had the freedom to do that because here on our property, we've got a whole house backup and it's not just a generator, but it's the batteries, it's the solar, it's the inverters, it's the generator, it's the gas, it's a whole package. And I finally feel like we've pretty much made it to the point where we're not phased when the power goes out. And I tell you what, it feels really, really good. In the past, we've had to run the generator nonstop to keep things going. And that gets really expensive, wastes a ton of fuel, and it's just really not that efficient. But this year, things were a lot different because of what's on the other side of this plug. It's a little noisy in here, but these guys on the wall and this cabinet full of batteries right here took us all the way through. That, my friend, is an end of the world insurance system, okay? These solar panels here had a lot to do with that. Now, if you've been following the channel, you know that these are temporarily set up here and I've got a lot more panels to put up. And so next storm, hopefully, uh, I'll be in an even better position. I ended up having to run the generator for four, maybe six hours. I didn't even put a full tank of gas through it, but we were without power for probably 40 hours total over the last two weeks. Even just last night, my wife and I, we had just gotten in bed, both barely dozed off, and all of a sudden we woke up to a click. In years past, what we would have to do, the lights would go out, everything would be super quiet, kids would come in, wake them up, they'd be distracted, they'd be scared maybe, not anymore. We just go back to sleep. So I'm gonna give you a really quick overview of what I've got behind me. It's gonna get a little noisy, but hopefully it'll be all right. At the heart of my system is the EG4 6000 XP. I've got three of these units and each one, as the name suggests, can put out 6000 watts of continuous power. You might be thinking 6,000 watts. I don't know what 6,000 watts means or does. That's okay. That's okay. You know, we all start that not knowing most likely. And that's where I was. 
So you gotta figure it out. A refrigerator, let's call it a thousand watts. It's gonna be less than a thousand. A window unit air conditioning, maybe a thousand watts. A space heater, 1500 watts. A coffee pot, surprisingly about a thousand watts. A TV, 200, maybe. A computer, 100, 150, it just kinda depends. Here's the deal, we run at any given time four refrigerators, an electric water heater, a deep well pump, all the lights in our house. My wife's in there cooking pasta right now. I think when the power was out last, we were cooking chicken fingers in the oven. You can run a lot, but 6,000 watts is kind of your upper end of a standard generator. Now, each of these can go over that for a small period of time, which will put you at 12,000 watts. Many household appliances like refrigerators, air conditioners, or our massive deep well pump that's behind me here, have an initial inrush, which basically means that for the first couple of seconds, the energy usage can be up to three times as high as it would be whenever it's just running. But the beauty of these EG4 inverters behind me is that they have the ability to double their max rated output for a brief moment, which will absorb that inrush and allow you to keep going without shutting down completely like some of the competition will. I've got another video with real world examples about this feature in the description below. So continuously, without having any issues, we're looking at 18,000 watts, which is enough for us to do everything that we need in our home. Now, the next thing is the batteries. You have to have good batteries if you're gonna end up running a system like this. Our batteries consist of six life power lithium iron phosphate batteries. Each of these batteries is 5,000 watt hours of stored energy. I'm rocking five generators just so I can stay online. What is a watt hour? Glad you asked. A watt hour is running that watt for an hour. So 5,000 watt hours means you can run 5,000 watts for one hour or 1,000 watts for five hours. So here total, we have about 30,000 watt hours. So with these batteries, we can run for one hour at 30,000 watts, which we can't actually put out. Basically two hours full throttle, or we could run a thousand watts for 30 hours. So how does it all work? Well, from the grid, it comes into this breaker box right here. Go open it up. You can see we've got three of these 40 amp breakers. Each breaker supplies power to one of these inverters. So you can see it comes out here in this light blue and goes up into here and then does the same thing over there, and then there's another one that goes that way. So we can feed the grid into these inverters. From that point, they take the grid's energy, and then they can send it out through these big, fat cables into the batteries and store the energy in the batteries. Now, whenever we need the battery power, then it goes back through the same cables, and then instead of going back to the grid, it goes through this one here, and then it goes along this direction and up, and into this breaker box. Now from here, we have these three right here. Now there are only five of them. And these three are powering our home. So from there, it comes out into these and it goes back down into the ground and over to our house. Now, I know this is pretty sloppy and some people are gonna hate all over it and it might even look confusing, but it's really simple. All of the new EG4 inverters come with the breakers and isolators built in, which is a huge plus. Literally with a flip of a switch, you can isolate your inverters from the grid or from your house or the batteries or your solar panels, allowing you to safely do maintenance on your system. They're also a built-in safety feature that will trip if too much current accidentally goes through the wires. This will keep you from burning your barn down. With my previous system, we had to add each one of these to the wall somewhere, and the cost is about 65 bucks a piece, plus you have to have the manual labor, and it adds to the distraction and the clutter. So overall, having them built in saves you time, money, and a headache. It's always been about the money. Let's break it down over here on this side because there's nothing else in the way. So we have grid power that comes in here, and then it goes up to this guy right here and that can turn on and off the grid. And then we have the load power, which is going to our house, and that comes out on this side, and it goes to the house, all right? Then we have our two battery cables right here. That's our positive and our negative. You can see red and black, positive and negative. And those are controlled by this guy right here. And then we have some communication cables, and that's it. Now, we do add two more cables to this inverter 
and to this inverter. And those are simply our solar panels. And they come down this way, and then they go back up and they go to our panels. Now, I'm not exaggerating when I say, if you can wire up these, 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 just those few cables, you can need a screwdriver or a socket wrench, and you can use a screwdriver and a socket wrench to connect these guys here. You can do this. Like, it's not that hard. Anybody can do it. If you've put together a Lego set, you've probably done more complicated things. Now, it's figuring out how to do it and just having somebody walk you through it, that's the hard part. But there's so many videos that either on my channel or other channels out here on YouTube that you can learn how to do all of this and have the energy independence to feel confident and know that when the storm comes through, you might have to get out there and fix your driveway or take down a tree or God forbid even take one off the top of your roof, but you're not gonna have to deal with being out of power. Now, one last thing, and I said that I ran my generator, and I did because I didn't have enough sun to keep things going, and that is that I used this guy here. Now it comes through the wall, my generator plugs into the other side of this with the exact same plug, I plug this into my generator, and then it goes to the charge inverter, and from here, it just charges the batteries. Now, I can run my generator outside and charge my batteries while my house is still going, and 100% of that generator's output goes into the batteries instead of charging your iPhone in a refrigerator while 60% of it is just evaporating in cost. So while others were experiencing things like this, and like this, this whole area is blacked out. We were living life like normal, and it was awesome. As preppers, we have a lot of things that we need to keep going, like the swimming pool. I mean, who doesn't want to have the pump running when the power's out for everyone else? Now, we did have the swimming pool pump going and didn't have to worry about it, which was super cool. But in reality, it was the regular refrigerator and freezer, but then we also have three additional deep freezers that are full of food, and then the air conditioner, and you know all of the things that we need like the deep well pump so that we can take showers and have hot water and all that stuff with the electric water heater i know this might sound hard or complicated but it's really quite simple and straightforward once you get into it you don't need a whole lot of specialized knowledge or specialty tools and the tools that you do need you're gonna want to use anyway for a later projects and who doesn't want to buy more tools anyway? Not only do all of these products come with clear manuals and instructions, you've always got people like me to help you visualize the entire process. If you get stuck, check out my channel. I've got tons of videos on different products and how to install them and common problems you might find along the way. That way, you and your family can weather the next storm with a heck of a lot more comfort. If you want the peace of mind that comes with a system like this, check out this video for more information and I've got links in the description for everything below. See you in the next one.